Someone help me. What's up, Bob Moss Nano Tanks here with a different type of video today. I've mentioned it in some past videos and live streams, but one of the reasons I've had issues keeping my Silhouette Shrimp alive is that I couldn't get the minerals to fully dissolve and get the water to the appropriate pH. I decided to document this process and show my issues for you guys to show you I'm not full of it and possibly get some tips from people who've done this before, as I'd love to keep Silhouette in the future, but I'm afraid of wasting more money as they're not the cheapest species to purchase. Anyway, I I think that's enough of a preamble to all this. I, I uh, get into it more in the video. So let's get into the meat of it and attempt to dissolve some shrimp salts. This is it. All right, so here I have my Silhouette Mineral 8.5 or 8 comma 5 because Europe right. and the, so it has instructions for use and it has a dosage. So for the dosage, you know, use the RO water, blah, blah, blah. Use a slightly heaped measuring spoon for 20 liters of water. That's five gallons. So that's gonna fit into my bucket here. And then it says up here to you, if you use CO2 to dissolve the mineral, please make sure you aerate it, blah, blah, blah. Uh, adapt it to the temperature of the tank. So it's, obviously you should probably warm it. So I'm gonna be trying everything today. I'm gonna be trying uh, the CO2. I have my soda stream here I'm gonna be using. I'm going to be trying heat. I have a little uh, warm water. I'm gonna, I have a heater that I'm gonna use. And we're also going to put an air stone in it so that it is mixing it constantly. And I'm telling you guys, this stuff doesn't dissolve. And maybe maybe we can figure it out together. Now this stuff, this Silhouette 8.5, honestly, it's kind of like baking soda where like the, um, the bee shrimp minerals are, it's much more like salt. <laughs> this is much more like baking soda. It's a softer, a softer mineral. So we're gonna get a slightly heaped scoop, you know, almost level, slightly heaped, come on. <laughs> there, that should be good, right? Slightly heaped, and we're gonna toss it in, okay? And we're in business. Boom, there's my minerals. That's all I have to do for that there. And now this is my pure RO water, as you can see here on my TDS meter, zero TDS, blah, blah, blah. That's gonna be a little bit on the colder side. And the temperature is gonna be going down here, but we don't have to wait for the temperature. It's like 18 degrees or something. So that's not gonna dissolve it very well right away. But before I add in the pure RO water, what I'm gonna do is use the soda stream here and create some carbonated water and put that in first. So I already have some pure RO water in this, in the soda stream bottle. So we're gonna do that real quick. These things, you know, you just pick up a soda stream from your local Walmart or whatever. And there's, you know, it says to use three to five pumps to get it like carbonated, like a soda pop. So we're gonna do something like that. All right, so I got my carbonated water. We're gonna move over here. I'm gonna add that in first. Da, 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 da. They just beat the devil out of it. Now the CO2 shouldn't be necessary. It's just an additional thing that they recommend you can do. So what I'm gonna do now is take my RO water and pour it in. Nailed it. Pouring in the RO water like that also gives it a good mix when you put it in rather than like using your RO unit to add to the to the bucket. I, I pour it in like that because then it stirs it a bunch. I do also have a little stir stick I can use to give it stirs throughout. Wow. Because it's a relatively small water volume, I'm just gonna use one of these little nano heater things, pop it in there. I'm gonna have to move the bucket long term in order to get the actually the heater is in there good enough. That should be good. So that'll warm the water up to like 24 degrees Celsius, something like that, 22, 24 degrees. And then my final step for this part at least is to add in a little air stone. That will get it mixing better. We'll turn up my air. Ta-da. I'm gonna move this into a better spot so that the air stone gets right, actually does it get to the bottom? Whatever. I'm gonna move it to a better spot so the air stone gets right to the bottom. And we'll be back in a couple days to show you how it didn't dissolve and how my pH I, I can only ever get the pH to like 8, 8.1. I can never get it to 8.5, guys, I swear. Someone help me. All right, here we are back with my bucket of water and minerals in it. And uh, I mean, some has dissolved, but you'll see. It's actually been way longer than I originally planned. Just I got busy with other things in the shrimp room and you'll see what's going on <laughs> over here. It's been so long that the room looks almost completely different now. I'll show you this really quick just to show you I'm not lying, it doesn't all dissolve. 
See there in the bottom? See all the the dust? I just can't get that last bit to dissolve. I had a hard time. And I feel like that last bit is what is like holding my pH just a little bit too low. If I, can, if I could get that dissolved, then it would probably raise the pH up to the 8.5 that I need. So we'll take this stuff out. Take that out, take out the heater. Cause we are, I'm essentially done with this experiment for now. I'm gonna use this water probably in my call tubs for water change water. Cause I don't actually have the Siloasi tank set up anymore. Sad times, I know. So just to show you what I was getting at, I'm gonna be testing the TDS and the pH a couple ways. I have my pens here. Um, the TDS pen will be just fine. The pH pen, you know, if it's not calibrated properly, it can give you some different readings. And I haven't, I don't have calibration fluid and I haven't calibrated it in a little while. So I'm going to be double checking, confirming our pH results with the, the drop test. So what we want is the high pH to be in the purple area. If it's not purple, then the pH is too low. It's not doing what I need it to. Um, so on the low pH, we expect it to be very blue. And then on the high pH, I'm expecting it to be purple. So if we don't get that, then we know <laughs> that it's not raising my pH appropriately. And we, we already know that it's not dissolving. So I, I can't get this stuff to dissolve. And I did more, I didn't just put in that one thing of CO2. I put in like, I don't even know how many, six or seven more things of carbonated water to try and get this dissolved and i mean it's probably done better than i've ever had it before a part of me wants to keep adding co2 and seeing if that will dissolve it but i also <laughs> need to use this bucket for stuff it's been here for literally like six weeks at this point so let's just without further ado here let's start the test we will clamp the ph pen because that takes the longest amount of time so we'll clamp it on the side and let it go to work well, that's doing that. I'll take the TDS pen, get it here. If I hit hold, I can bring it up. And take a look-see at it. So my TDS is at 159. I hope you can see that there, 159. So the TDS is appropriate. It's in the right range that we want for Siloasi minerals and whatever. Uh, I think they want it at like 140-ish. I might have had, I, I might have had too much of a heap. They, when they tell you just a heaping um, scoop, you know, it's hard to actually get the exact amount compared to say a level scoop. Like what's a heap to you? I don't know. Ooh. All right, and we'll get some water here for the drop test. So five milliliters in each. I just use one of my turkey basters, get it up to five milliliter. Pretty straightforward stuff here. Nothing, nothing. Uh, I hope you guys have done something like this before. If you've never tested your water, get yourself a test kit and just see what happens. So I'll start with the low pH one. This needs three drops one two three and as i said i'm expecting this to be very very blue so if it's incredibly blue which it is luckily i don't even need to hold it up to the paper although i guess i should for the video you can see it's very very blue so that's what we expect from there so it's at least starting to get up there now let's see what my high range ph test gives us i have to add five drops here one two three four five put the cap on give it a quick shake and like i said we want purple we want purple right so this is not quite there yet look at here i hope you can see that appropriately it's probably closer to the 8.0 maybe right in between 8.0 and 8.2 is what i'm seeing i'll bring it up a little closer for you guys on the camera it looks like yeah probably 8.2 on the camera there so as you can see i'm not really breaking into the the mid eights and the high eights which is where you want it you want your Siloasi minerals to be 8.5 and i just managed an 8.2 on this one so we will maybe give the ph pen a little bit more time this actually this is a great example this is how you know that you need to calibrate your ph pen so we we confirmed with the drop test and these are very very accurate like they're not an exact like the ph pen will give you when it's calibrated properly but the drop test will always give you uh the right color range compared to my pH pen, which is we're giving me a 7.1, which it clearly isn't. It's this, so this is probably off by a full measure of pH. Like it should be reading probably 8.1 and it's reading 7.1. So that's a sign I need to get some calibration fluid. So that's a fun thing to include in the video. As you can see, I just, I can't figure out how to dissolve this. I did CO2, I did heat, I did agitation. Uh, it just, it won't dissolve and it won't give me that final like 0.3 of the pH rise. I, I don't know if the 8.2 is like good for Siloasi. I'm sure if I, if I drip 
syrup acclimated them for a really, really long time, they would be fine with the pH difference. But uh, like mine all died within a couple of months. Um, so it makes me think that there was just something wrong with the water parameters, the water conditions, and they weren't able to mold appropriately. And obviously now I don't have any Siloese. <laughs> we don't make mistakes. We just have happy accidents. <laughs> but it is something I do want to get in the future. I just need to figure out the minerals here first. So, so any tips, leave them in the comments below. I really appreciate it. And I guess let's wrap this video up. Thanks so much for watching. Like I said, give me your tips in the comments. If you don't have any tips, feel free to call me stupid. I kind of feel that way with this uh, in particular. Normally people only show successes, so I thought it would be good to show a failure. Hopefully you guys uh, agree with me and we can all learn something from whatever it is I just made and you just watched. So hit the like button if you liked it. Subscribe if you're new. Shout out to my channel members. I don't do that often enough. Kendra Crippen, Drifters Workshop, Jens Brinkman, Robert Redmond, Zodiac246, BJ Palmer, Jake FWTX, and Mitch Bottoma. Support links are in the description. If you're in North America, be sure to check out my web shop and see if there's anything that tickles your fancy. Thanks again for watching and remember until next time, keep your shrimp hand strong. Bye-bye now. Thank you very much. So let's take a look at the instructions. You add the Sulawesi mineral inside of the aquarium, blah, 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 blah. Uh, where's the... <laughs> Motherfucker. Uh, I recommend adapting temperature. Please make sure. Instructions for use. Dosage. Okay, here we go. Okay, retake, retake. Three, two, one. I don't even know if that works. No. God damn it. Well, I'll scratch this shit. Fuck it, let's roll with it. Gotta go pick up a new CO2 canister, I guess. That fucking blows. God damn it. No, I'm gonna bust, bust this heater. So I've gotta sync this up with the other footage because my CO2 is empty. <laughs> I tried to take that. Okay. Three, two, one. All right, here we are. It has been many moons. It's been so long that actually, wait, let me start that over.